Okay, I'm happy with the effects I've done on these lights, so I'm going to click OK to exit the effects menu so that I will not be able to undo those because I really won't need to. So I'm going to come back into the menu now and I want to teach you how to use the spread command. First I'll explain what it does. When you click on spread, the first thing you need to do is to set the center point of the hottest spot of the light. For example, let's say I want it to be right here in the middle of this walkway. So I click there, so that's my hot spot. And then I'm going to draw around where I want the light to go. And then when I get back to the beginning, I double click to close that polygon. And as you can see, the hottest spot is right here, and the light fades out as it goes to the edge. And again, this can be changed by setting your light width. So I'm going to change this to 30 now. Click Undo click spread again, hit the hot spot, draw around it, double click, and as you can see the hot spot is a bit wider because I upped my light width. Let's do a couple examples of this. So I'm going to undo again and I want to do the light from the uh, porch here shining down in the porch. Let's zoom in so what I'm going to do is I'll click on spread again. I want the hot spot to be down here. So I click there and then I want to draw around this area. I want the light shining on this wall. Actually it wouldn't be shining on the bricks here because that's in front of it. And down in this area and over on the house. I double click to close that and as you can see it's made it a little bit lighter there. Now it's really not popping because really this is a darker area. Remember we uh, duplicated this piece here and moved it up so it's really not a lot of light there. Uh, the other thing too we want to do is to turn on this light. So again I'll go up here to draw and I just drew over it and it looks like the light is on. Let's draw something down here. See I'm drawing here but you don't see the difference. That's because that is really dark to begin with. So let's put in a lighting effect for one of these path lights. So again I'll click on spread. I want the hot spot to be as close to the light so I click there and then I'm going to draw how far out I want this light to go. Now it's going to be hitting probably the side of this plant here so I'm not going to draw over the plant. I'll just kind of highlight the side here because we want that to light up and we'll bring it over to here. Unfortunately it's the side of the picture. So again I double click to close that and we've got a lighting effect. Actually what happened was I triple clicked and you see this little bright spot there but if you click undo that'll go away. So zoom out so you get a better idea of what I just did. You can see that lighting effect there. So let's do it again for this light over here. Let's move it out of our way. Again we click spread. We set the hot point then we draw in where we want the effect to be. It really wouldn't be on this plant here because it's behind it. We wouldn't see the light on it. Double click and you can see it's brightened that up. Even though I didn't draw this smooth, it doesn't really matter because the program smooths that area out from going lighter to darker or darker to lighter depending on how you look at it. So let's do one more again. We click spread. This is going to be my hot spot. I want it to go out into here. Double click. And we didn't do this one here, so we'll click spread. That's going to be my hot spot. And this one would be shining on the plant here. And again, we're going off the screen. And we'll double click. And as you can see, it kind of lit up this edge of the plant, which looks pretty realistic. So I'm just going to go ahead a little bit faster now and do these. Again, you click spread, set the point, draw in the area where you want the light to go. Again, I clicked one too many times. That'll probably happen to you. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with that. So now we want to do the up lighting effects. And it pretty much works the same way. So we're going to zoom in again. And now I want this light going up the side of the wall. So again, I'll click spread. I want the hot spot to be right about there. And then I'm going to draw from the light here 
over onto the wall, going up the wall, coming across underneath the eaves, and back to the light, and I double click. And you can see we've got that effect. I'm going to do it on this side. Again, I hit spread. I'll put the spread right about there. Draw where I want the light to illuminate. And double click. Pretty simple. Now we want to do a couple more and we're almost done. You see how quick it does go though once you get the hang of it. Again, spread. We want the hot spot to be right about, say, there. We draw in where we want the light to shine. And double click to close that. Again, I triple click, so we'll hit undo. And I think there's one more. We'll put the spread right about there. Bring it up the side of this wall. Now, look at this in reality. This wall here is really in the shade because of the angles here of reality of where the sun is. And really, if you put a light there, it would light up this wall. But there's really nothing you could do about it because the picture is dark. That is going to happen. But again, if we click OK now to exit that and zoom out, you get the lighting effect. Now we want to turn it darker. We hit the all the way dark button and as you can see it looks pretty cool. That's about all there is to it. Again you can go back to the before, take a look at it, and then go back to the night. Now before I move on I want to save this picture off because I want a picture with the lighting effects on it before I put any labels or anything else on this picture. So again what you do is you go up here to file, click save as, make sure the files of type is set to JPEG. I'm going to change the name here, put it in effects. So now I have one with the lighting effects on it. The program also gives you two ways to label your lighting fixtures should you need to do that. First of all, I'm going to zoom in a little here. And let's say I want to call out this lighting fixture here. I could go up here to Tools, click on Add Text, type in the name of the lighting fixture here. I could go into Font and change the font, style, and color, and everything else, just like on all Windows programs. Then click OK, and then move that label where I want it. The other option is to go up here to this lighting fixture symbol here, click on it, and you'll see that this is the thumbnail libraries of all the different uh, fixtures that we have in the program. Now let's pick something that looks like the one we used. This one here looks pretty close, so I'll click on it. You'll see that it gives the spec sheet for that one. This one's manufactured by Vista. If I want to add a label to it, I click on Add. Let's close this and then you see that it has a A for your text here. You click where you want the arrow to be pointing to and then you click again where you want the label to be and it places a label there for you so it automatically labels them. Now we could go in and do that again. So again you scroll down to the product you want, click on it, click add. Let's set this so that it's going to close after we use it and then point at it then click again and it'll put the name. So do it one more time. Go into the label. Let's just grab anything here. Click Add and then label it. Now if you don't like the font that you're using you can always change that too just by right clicking on it. Go in here to font. Change the style of font. Change it to bold. Change the size. Change the color all these things like most Windows programs. Click OK, click OK again, and you see the font change. Now because I made it really large, it doesn't really fit in the window. But you get the idea. Now let's put a label on one of our up lights and we'll call it a day once we get that in there. And let's use this one here. Again we click Add, place where we want the label to be and I'm going to skip ahead and label everything just for this example. Now the program also has the ability to let you label a transformer. Now we wouldn't see the transformer in this image so if you was wanted it to be printed out in the estimate which I'll show you here in a second just pick any old transformer here. We're going to add it. 
we're going to place it up here um, beside the house. We could even move it off the screen if we wanted to because it doesn't really matter. We don't want it showing. So now I'm going to create an estimate. Now what it does is it takes all the labels that are on the screen and it will give you a compilation of those labels. So if I have three of these and four of those and two of those, it's going to let me know what I've got. It's not accurate. For example, let's say this is a nice long walkway here. It's going to be probably another 15-20 feet to the driveway. There might be four or five lights that are going to be along the walkway that are not in the picture. So it's not accurate from a estimating standpoint, just giving you a list of what's in the picture. So to do that, what you do is you go here to File, click on Night Lighting Materials List, and then I'm going to set mine to a PDF writer. What this is going to do is create a PDF for me so that I can actually print it out or email it. Otherwise you would pick a printer setting and it will go directly to a printer which of course you wouldn't see in the movie here. So now I click OK. Now it's going to ask me where I want to save this PDF. I could change the name if I wanted to but I just click Save. And I'm going to open up that PDF and as you can see it gave me the model of the transformer I used for the 2250, two of the models 6222, and one of the LED PL3, whatever that is. So it gives you a list and you're able to go in here and manually uh, fill in the rest of the information here. And you can change this logo here, which we're going to show you to do in the last training movie. So I just wanted to let you know that that's a possibility there for you. Now, if you wanted to print this out with the labels on it, again, I would save this as a different image. Again, so I'll go File, Save As, and this is called Lights and Effects, and I'll just call it with text, and click Save. So now I have about four saved images for this particular project itself.